Hello and welcome to the Set Play Gaming channel. My name is Arlad and we're doing the FIFA 14 flashback Road to Glory with Portsmouth, starting with Ian Goodison, the legendary Jamaican centre back who's retiring from professional football, a player for the history books. We're going to retire him and take over the Portsmouth job and try and get Portsmouth from League 2 into the Premier League and the first job for Goodison is to gain automatic promotion let's jump into it so we're going to start by doing a little bit of an introduction into the current Portsmouth side and we're going to take a look at the squad report kind of see what we're dealing with I'm going to have to refer to my notes a little bit first um, just to sort of guide us along so bear with me I'm going to go through the squad go through the players that we're going to be using in this first season so here is the team management screen and as you can see we actually have a default 442 formation again this is optional to change it could change to 4231 it could change to 433 um, there's a number of different formations diamond wide is another formation uh, there's the 4231 there's the 4-3-3 and then we've got a 4-5-1 attack so those are different formations that we can use um, if you have any input regards to what I'm about to sort of put forward uh, as far as the playing staff goes um, problem areas that we have on the field then please do if you can remember as far back as FIFA 14 remember to help me with any suggestions and I very much appreciate it so we'll start with the goalkeepers um, that's the first team as you can see uh, Sullivan is rated significantly higher than veteran Phil Smith so he gets the nod in goal um, now the right back spot we actually have two right backs but the guy that's in there at the minute Joe Devera is actually a centre back and his growth from what I can tell um, it looks to be exponentially larger than the two right backs. Um, so the problem we have is that alleviated, uh, accentuated even by the fact that the two centre backs and Gala and Bradley um, are young and they're actually rated quite highly, 59, both of them respectively. Um, and again, they have some good growth. Now, and Gala only grows by, I think, four or five points. Um, if we can sort the right back spot out, I think uh, possibly we could do with Bradley and Devera at centre back and then move in one of the two right backs that I'm going to show you in a second. We actually have a French right back, Yassin Moutaukil. I hope I said that right. Um, he is 26, so he should be playing first team football, but his overall is only 60. Um, and he doesn't he doesn't have a tremendous amount of growth in him. Danny East is a youngster who's 21. He has more growth in him, almost 10 points. So he could play in that right back spot. But again, the problem then is um, as far as sort of like team expectations, squad rotation, squad roles, things like that. It means we have to play Devera somewhere. Um, I might end up putting Devera in the middle along with Sonny Bradley. Um, and then moving Danny East to right right back. Um, Painter, he's basically Marcos Painter, 64 overall. He's 26. He only has a couple of points growth in him, but he should see us through both League 2 and even League 1. Uh, then we come to the midfield. Uh, Simon Ferry and Johannes Ertel. Uh, Ertel's, I think, I think it's the same guy who actually does play for Austria Um in the international setup so the fact that he's dropped into league two uh is is huge um he could be crucial for us um the midfield position next to him is taken by simon ferry now you'll see here in a second i'm going to show you the um the squad report in a second you'll see in a minute the issue i have with if if Ertel is going to be the holding player um, because his interceptions are higher than anybody else in midfield. 
Um, the guys moving forward don't have good attacking position sense, which isn't necessarily at the end of the world because they're not cams anyway. They are just central midfielders. But if somebody's going to break forward from that midfield, kind of like a box-to-box -box guy, um, I'm hoping that Simon Ferry does work out because the other guy, Padavani, doesn't have very good um, attack position either. So that might be something that we can look at in the future as far as bringing somebody in into central midfield who's a good box-to-box -box guy to get up and down uh, the field. Now the wing positions are pretty much taken by Andy Barcham and Jed Wallace. Wallace is the highest growth rated player in our side. Uh, one of, sorry, the second highest rated growth player alongside Sonny Bradley. These are two of the guys that we're really going to be building around. Um, and then Andy Barcham, he's probably the quickest player in our team. Um, I think he's, his speed is like 88. So he, we're going to be trying to get those crosses in from the left. And try and obviously get them to Adjamang and Connolly in the box. And that brings us to our two strikers. Adjamang and Connolly. Uh, Adjamang is the more powerful striker, stocky striker type. Um, we're going to play the ball into him and hope that he can hold it up. Um, and then obviously if there's any knockdowns, uh, David Connolly, the experienced Irish striker. Now these two... Adjamang is 32, he's going to be 33, and Connolly is 36, he's going to be 37. Both of them have already announced the retirement. Um, so I'm going to show you again, we're going to go through these real quick. Um, John Sullivan, 62 rated. He's the first choice goalie. And as you can see there, Joe Devera, uh, centre-back playing right back. He can actually play that position. And he's a long passer, so hopefully if he does get some space on that right side, he can swing a couple of crosses in. Um, he can also play left back. He's uh, got a three-star weak foot. That might come in handy if we get any injuries. And you'll see as well with these two, um, six foot two. And again, six foot two. Uh, he can also play left back as well, Sonny Bradley, but he'll mostly play centre back. Uh, Marcos Painter... A good stamina, 84. Uh, Republic of Ireland also can play centre-back in an emergency if we need him to. Uh, and then, this is kind of what I was talking about before. Um, as far as attacking goes, um, his attack position is only 38. And vision, 63. Um, so again, as, as far as creating... As you can see from this, he's actually got better attack stats, even though he's a central defensive midfielder. It's just that he's got 70 on aggressions and 62 on interceptions. So he's our best defensive option as far as playing in that central midfield role goes. Um, and those are the two strikers, uh, as you can see on the status, they're both retiring. Um, now... What I was talking to you before about Danny East, he's um, got some good growth in him. He plays right back and also plays right mid and CM if needed to. Um, not specifically very fast, but a good overall uh, around, rounded player. Um, Padovani, this is the other guy as opposed to Simon Ferry in central midfield. Nicely rounded. Good reactions. His vision's only 59 and his attack position's only 47. Uh, doesn't have a tremendous amount of growth in him, I don't think. Uh, maybe like five or six points. So we're looking at around 64, 65. Probably carry us through League One. Um, if, if anything, he looks more like a surefire replacement for 32-year-old Ertel. Um, and again, even at that, when you look at his interceptions, they're only 54, low aggression as well. So I'd still say that given his stamina, he would be um, a better option alongside uh, Simon Ferry if Ertel's legs can't carry him. Uh, but again, it's sort of like from an attacking sense, we don't really have anybody that can burst into the box and, and, and threaten um, if Ertel's going to sit. Um, so we'll hope that Simon Ferry or Roman Padovani is going to work out. Now, as far as the retiring strikers goes, we do have a couple of strikers on the books already waiting in the wings. 26-year-old Tom Craddock, um, he's got 
if you have a look at his um, player information, um, he's he's actually very 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 well rounded as well. Five foot eleven, um, and as you can see, he's fast. He can actually play on the wing um, in an emergency, uh, but he's going to be sort of like again, he's going to be in that position probably to play um, to replace Adjamang. While he's not an out and out tall, lanky, powerful striker, um, the other guy that we have in the striking position is Ashley Harris, and he's the same height as Connolly, and he's a centre forward, so he's a five foot nine, smaller striker. He would suit Connolly's poacher role, so that's why I say um, Harris would probably take Connolly's spot, and then uh, Tom Craddock would probably take um, Adjamang's spot. We also have Ryan Bird. Um, again, he's 25, 55 overall, not a, a huge amount of growth, but 75 strength and six foot four. So he's definitely somebody that can take up that post position role on the edge of the box if needed be. We do have some centre backs and some other players. Um, Jack Watmo, who in the future would become a very, very good centre back. Um, on this game, I don't think he has a tremendous amount of growth. Um, so once we get the sort of the youth academy going, we'll definitely be looking to bring in some defenders. Probably a third goalie, a, um, a, a development goalie. We're going to need to bring one of those in because Phil Smith is 33. I'm not sure how much longer he's going to last. Um, that pretty much wraps that squad report up. Um, the wings, as I mentioned, are going to be Andy Bartram and Jeb Wallace. And then, depending on sort of what we have available for match days, um, it's looking like Danny East, the right back, might play right midfield, or Bradley Tarbuck. And then you'll have Ricky Holmes on the left side. He can also play on the right as well, in a, in a pinch. He's a long shot taker. Again, 26. A lot of these guys do have... Um, sort of like that mid around the mid 20s age range so they'll be looking for a lot of com uh, games thankfully we do have a lot of domestic cups to take part in. so as far as this season goes um it should go by pretty quickly i'm going to sort of try and do it on a results month by month basis so each episode should be one month in its entirety it doesn't mean i'm going to show you absolutely everything in some cases it's just going to be the results uh, but moving forward, as far as the style of career mode, um, I'm probably going to do this more like a road to glory. So it's going to be a mixture of signings when I can manage them and then um, academy players again when I can sort of bring them in. I'm not just going to replace the entire first team with academy players. Um, it's not going to be a used squad legend save. At least that's not my intention. Uh, simply because we just don't have the finances for it. I mean... If you have a look at this budget, half a million sounds like a lot, but the problem we have is that we need to save that for our actual um, youth staff. We don't have any youth staff right now. Um, if I try to hire a scout, as you can see, um, if I'm looking for a three-star, three-star scout, the one that's two-star, three-star is 680000 so I can't even afford a three star three star as it stands um dean waghorn is a three star two star but that would leave me with just twenty thousand pounds left in the bank which again i can't spunk all me all my budget on on that one one guy um i think that the, the smartest thing here for me to do would be to look for a two star two star um and save my save my money um, I'm not sure what a two star, two star would cost, but a one star, one star is £42,000. So I don't want to go for the absolute bottom, but I think we should be aiming somewhere between two and three stars to get some decent players coming through our academy within the next year. We have at least a season. What I did manage to do was to secure the main core bulk of the um, squad. So the players that I've just ran through um, are basically the players are going to be using for most of the season. And the board thoroughly expects me to win the league, uh, to, to, to get promoted. So if we have a look um, just quickly at the, the league objective, it says uh, we're looking for a successful 
season. Um, and um, I don't think it says it there, but um, objectives. There it is. There it is. So gain automatic promotion. So Ian Goodison has to gain automatic promotion. We don't necessarily have to win the league, but I think we should try and go for it because we do have some very good players. Um, there's some good teams in this league. Uh, just me showing you the league table before we get any games underway. Might bring back some nostalgic memories. I love the look of this league table. Uh, something that I do like the look of, the classic look. Uh, so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to get the friendlies out of the way. And then when we come back in episode two, I'll just run over pre-season, skim over it. And then probably go through the results of August. And that will conclude episode two, as you can see there. Uh, you get all that out of the way and run through any transfers if we've signed anyone. It's highly unlikely that we will sign someone simply because we don't have the cash. If we can find a, a, a centre-back or a central midfield to help us that's not going to blow too much of our money, then we might do that. Uh, but we'll see how we get on in pre-season. All right, that's it for episode one. When we come back in episode two, we'll get the pre-season out the way and also finish August, wrap up any transfers, all that kind of jazz. If you enjoyed this episode, please smash the like button, continue to support me, and I'll see you next time for another episode. See you later.